Hi everybody, it's Miss Mary again from Midpoint Library System with another fun Midpoint Maker. How have you liked our program so far? I thought you enjoyed them. I have. So today we're looking at this painting. Hmm, what do you think of that one? Well, first let me say that I don't have any formal art training or education, but I really like to make things. It's fun to try something new and discover what I can do. Sometimes the things I create look great, and sometimes they don't. But every time I have fun and I learn something. I hope you like making stuff too. So we're gonna look at a famous work of art and see if we can make something ourselves using the same technique or a similar technique. Do you remember what the word technique means? It's a big word that means way. The way an artist makes their art is their technique. So if you like to eat spaghetti by twirling it around your fork, then twirling is your spaghetti technique. Make sense? Let's keep going. Today we're looking at this painting by an artist named Jackson Pollock. Some people call this painting blue poles because that's what they see, right? Jackson Pollock called this painting number 11, 1952. He didn't want to put names on his paintings, so he numbered them instead. He thought if he called it blue poles, people would only see the blue poles and not all the other colors and shapes. So let's look at this painting. Try to look only at the red parts. What do you see? Or maybe the yellow. What do you see there? Do you see any patterns or designs emerging? Jackson Pollock liked to listen to jazz music while he played, and he thought of his paintings like jazz. There are patterns to follow, but the artists kind of make it up as they go along. Sometimes the rhythm of his painting motions matched the rhythms that he heard in music. This style of painting is called abstract expressionism. Now, abstract means that there are not recognizable images, like no animals or houses or people. It is energy and motion made visible. Somebody famous said that. And expressionism means that the artist is showing their emotions or attitudes. Like if you are smiling, you are showing your emotion through your facial expression. Does that make sense? All right. So how did he make this painting? Well, I gotta tell you, he made a huge mess. That's because this painting is huge. It's almost seven feet tall and almost 16 feet wide. Like, I could park my car on top of this painting and there would still be room all around it. So this is much too big to put up on an easel to paint. So he laid his material down on the floor and he painted it there. Sometimes he dripped paint. Sometimes he took a bucket of paint and just dumped some of it. Sometimes he squirted paint. And sometimes he would use a stick to splatter the paint around. It was so messy! Well, today we're going to make our own abstract expressionist paintings. But we'll keep the mess contained, I promise, grown-ups. It won't be that bad. For this project, you're going to need these materials. Are you ready? You're going to want to have a shallow box. Now, I used the box from the lid from a box of paper, but you know, a shoebox lid would work really well. Or if you've got little kids and you're concerned about the mess, a pizza box works really well. All right. In fact, you can see that I've used this one already. You put your paper in there, do what we're going to do with the lid closed, and then you don't have to worry about anybody or anything wearing all the paint. So you've got your box, paper. I, again, am using cardstock, pretty simple paper to have around. Um, uh, some tape to tape it down inside the box. You'll want some paint. I used acrylic paint, and I have three colors here, red, and yellow and blue. I put those in disposable bowls, obviously. All right. You're also going to want to have some marbles. I bet you have marbles around your house. I have some big ones and some little ones. You'll also want to have some spoons. All right. 
Um, again, I used disposable spoons because I'm using acrylic paint and I don't want to mess up my nice spoons. Kids, get your parents permission if you're going to use good spoons. All right. In addition to the marbles, I also have a couple of old shoelaces. All right, because we're going to use those too. I've got my tape down. Um, and, you know, Jackson Pollock listened to jazz music while he made his painting. So if there's some good music you want to listen to that'll kind of get you moving, use that. I had some picked out and you know what? My CD was scratched and it didn't work. So, oh well, that's life. So here's what we're going to do. All right. I'm going to put a marble into each color of paint. I'm going to put in one big marble and one little marble. And I'm going to do that with each color so that we can roll them around. Now Jackson Pollock, when he did his painting, he put the canvas on the floor and threw paint onto the canvas. But I just promised your parents we're not going to make a big mess. So I'm going to start with blue and I've got my bowl with paint in it and I've got my marbles in there. Can you see them? I'm wearing gloves. Again, I don't want to get paint all over my hands because I can't get in the shower as soon as I'm done. I'm at work. But if you're at home and you want to make a mess and take a bath after, hey, that's good. Good for you. So I'm going to take my spoon, scoop up my marble, and drop it in. Isn't that cool looking? And then I can roll it around and make it go however. Now, if you are talented at balancing things and you maybe want to make a star shape, or see if you can make a circle. You can do that. See how it just kind of goes everywhere? Isn't that fun? I taped the paper down inside the box so that the paper would stay put and the marble wouldn't roll underneath it. But you know, if you don't tape it down, you could probably get some cool effects that way. All right, I'm gonna put that blue marble back in the blue paint. What should we use next? I've got yellow or red. I think I wanna try red. Now with the blue, I used a great big marble, which you can tell by the big bloop where it landed. But for the red, I think I'll use a small, smaller marble. And I'm gonna drop it over here. Again, there's a big bloop where it landed. And we're gonna go around and around. Now we're not gonna be able to color the whole page, right? Because when you're just rolling it like this, your aim isn't probably great. Unless you're an expert marble player, then you might be able to do some really cool things. Okay, so we're going to roll that all around. Hmm, I wonder what I should call this. Kind of some blue poles in there, I suppose. Oh, now you may have noticed, I don't know if you can see this quite closely, that after the red marble went it through that puddle of blue paint, look at this line here. It looks almost like it's dotted red and blue because I think the marble had red on one side and blue on the other. Isn't that neat? I wonder what's gonna happen with yellow now. I'm gonna roll it around, roll my marbles around in that paint. Again, I'm using acrylic paint, but if you have um, some other kind of paint at home, that may work just as well. It'd be interesting to see how it turns out. Um, Jackson Pollock used house paint, you know, like you'd use on the outside of your house, which I think is kind of cool. All right, you ready? Yellow, bloop. And let's see what happens with this one. Roll it all around. Oh, you can see some good texture here where um, it looks almost like when a car drives through dirt, right? And it goes up on the sides of the track. It's all over. So when you're making a painting like this, you kind of want to think about, do you see any images in it? Right now, Jackson Pollock didn't want to call his blue poles because he didn't want us to see only blue. But do you see any designs in this? Hmm. I kind of think when I look at it, let's see. This yellow up here, I don't know if you can see this real well, but right here in this yellow part, you can almost see lines in it. It kind of reminds me of feathers on a bird. The tracks from the paint. I think this yellow paint might be a little thicker than the other kind. 
and that's why it makes those tracks. But let me try it again with a blue one. That's really neat. I'll be honest, I haven't seen that happen before. Um, and I've done this project a couple times. Oh, you can really see it in the blue. Look at that right here. It almost looks like a tire tread, but I want to, you know, I think it looks more like feathers. So there you go. Now I've got these big gobloops of paint here. I'm going to put the blue marble back in. I'm going to use my great big red marble and drop that here. And my great big yellow marble, which now has some blue and some red on it. You can see how the color is mixed in my bowl. And I'm going to put that one up here. All right. I'm going to let them sit there for a minute. I'm going to pick up red and then pick up yellow. Smearing some paint on the picture there. See, this is why I wear gloves. And now I've got some blobs of paint. So now I'm going to take that shoelace, all right, and I'm going to drag it around through the paint. I'm going to push down a little bit there and then just drag it through and see what kind of patterns we can get that way. Whoa. Uh-oh, that was with my hand, not with the shoelace. That was cheating. What do you think? That does make it look really different. And you know what I just did with my shoelaces? I think I got rid of all my feathers. Uh-oh. Well, I think that I'm going to call this painting um, number 2, 2021. But other people might call it um, hidden feathers. What do you think? Yeah. All right. I called it number two because I did another one a couple weeks ago that kind of looks like this. I only used um, I only used marbles for this one, no shoelaces. And one thing that is kind of funny. Okay, so Jackson Pollock, he was kind of a weird guy. All right. Um, but he smoked cigarettes while he did his paintings, and sometimes he would drop the ashes from his cigarette right onto the floor onto his painting which is kind of gross, but also kind of cool that like there was something in there. And the day that I made this painting a couple weeks ago, um, I had just finished brushing my hair and I realized there's one of my hairs in the painting right there. And there's another one over there. So that might be worth something someday. Probably not. It's just my hair. Anyway, <laughs> so you kind of get a cool design like that. Um, if you use a pizza box to do your painting, then you can hold it and move it around like this or even shake it up and down but remember when you do that that um, when you use the pizza box the advantage is you're not going to spill paint everywhere right because if I tip this sideways and I get paint on the floor I get in trouble but the so the advantage to the pizza box is that you're not going to make a big mess the advantage to an open top box like this is you can see what you're doing I don't know that I would have seen those feather shapes if I was doing it inside the pizza box. But I'm also not a preschooler who's likely to throw the marbles around. So, so that is abstract expressionism in the style of Jackson Pollock. And it wasn't too messy. All right, so I have a couple of books to tell you about. This one is called Action Jackson by Jan Greenberg and Sandra Jordan and illustrated by Robert Andrew Parker. And it talks about how he made his paintings and a little bit about his life. And there's another one, it's a biography. It's called, get this, Jackson Pollock. And that one was written for us by Mike Venezia. And we have those books here at Midpoint Library. So be sure to check them out. Hey, wanna see how your paintings turned out? Be sure to post some pictures down there in the comments and um, check back and see what kind of projects we're doing next time. Thanks so much for joining us. Bye-bye everybody.